Hey guys, it's Maddie, and today I'll be doing my May and June wrap up. So, if I'm blinking a lot, I'm sorry, but I just got this ring light that sits on the lens of your camera, and it is literally like blinding me right now. Like, was this a good idea? I don't know, but my lighting lately has been so horrible, and I don't have room for my studio lights in this very small shoebox that I live in, which is a house. So, I got this like ring light that sits on the lens of your camera, which is super convenient because I can't fit studio lights in here, but it is like, get, like shining straight in my eyes. <laughs> it's like, uh, I like seeing dots everywhere, but if it'll help the lighting, it's worth it, I guess. But anyway, I will be doing my May and June wrap up for 2017. I didn't get to do my wrap up for May because I had just been starting to get back into doing videos right at the beginning of June, actually kind of in the middle, so I felt like it was already too late to do a May wrap-up. So I just decided to combine my May and June wrap-up in one video, and I honestly didn't read a lot of books in that month since I had been just coming out of a reading slump. So I only have a few books to show, but I thought I'd show them anyway because I have been reading pretty good books lately. So starting off with the statistics of what I read in May, I read two books and I read 624 pages. For genres, I read one horror and one fantasy. For my ratings, I gave one book a two star and one a five star. And I read one standalone book and one book that is a part of a series. So I'm actually going to show the books in the order that I read them. I know I in the past I've done like my least rated book to my most rated book, but I kind of want to go back to just doing them in order because just to kind of change it up. So starting with the first book I read in May, the first book I read when I came out of my reading slump, which was a bad book to start with, but it is Through the Woods. Is it Through the Woods? I don't have the actual book. I think it's Through the Woods. That's what it's called. I can't even remember what it's called because I honestly didn't really like this book, but this is a graphic novel I got from the library. I had heard about it on booktube, so I'm like, I'm going to check it out. And this is supposed to be a horror graphic novel, supposed to be, and it was just, it was just meh. That's all I have to describe it, I guess. The thing with this book is it's supposed to be a horror graphic novel, but it didn't freak me out to the least. Like, I felt no horror vibe coming from this book at all. The thing with this book is like the stories would start off like really intense, like you'd expect a horror book to be like, but then the payoff, the climax of each of the stories in this book was just, didn't live up to my expectations. Like I feel like at the end of a horror story you should be like really freaked out. There should just be this very big climax that is just like, like blows your mind. But the end of these stories is just like, I didn't get them. Like, some of them just made no sense at all. And I'm just, I sat there confused instead of, like, freaked out like you're supposed to be. And I just didn't really get into any of the stories in this book. I think there was one um, story that kind of gave me that, like, thrilling feeling, but all the other stories were just not that good. But I do think the illustrations in this book are beautiful. I think they're very eye-catching and they really fit the tone of the book. But the stories themselves were just a huge letdown. And I'm kind of upset that this is the book I started off with for coming out of my reading slump because it kind of just let me down. The only redeeming thing about this book is the illustrations. I think they're beautiful, but the stories were just no good. And I ended up giving this two out of five stars. And then I read a reread, and this is one of my favorite books of all time. And I actually listened to it on audiobook this time, and that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mott. And for those of you who don't know about this series, which I'd be surprised if you didn't, because it's everywhere, this series is about a girl named Feyre, and she has to hunt for food for her family so she ends up killing a wolf but this wolf actually ends up to be a fairy and in this world fairies actually do exist and the penalty for killing a fairy is death so this fairy comes to her house in wolf form and tells her that she has to pay her life in replacement for this fairy that she killed but instead he actually offers for her to live with him to pay for that so she starts living with this fairy and just discovers the whole world of where the fairies live and kind of also starts a relationship a friendship with this fairy who came and took her away and this is a beauty and the beast retelling and you can actually really see the beauty and the beast 
elements in it. I picked this up in preparation for the third book, which I haven't read yet, which still surprised me. But I was really excited to read this because after reading the second book and what you know from the second book, going back into this book was really interesting because now that I knew what happened in the second book, I could kind of pick out problem points that were involved in this book, which I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want to spoil the second book or this book, but the second book brings out issues in the first book, and it was really cool to kind of pick up on those things, like those problematic points that the second book brought out about the, um, I guess, relationship in this book. I thought that was really interesting, and even though now looking back, I do think I love A Court of Mist and Fury better, which if you have seen my A Court of Mist and Fury review before, I said that I actually love the first book better, but I do think looking back on this and rereading it again, there are some really problematic things with it that I never picked up on before, and is this my third time reading this book? Yes, it's my third time because I reread it last year in preparation for the second book. So this was my third time rereading it and I finally kind of picked up on those problematic points in it. However, I do still love the relationship in this book for what it is. I think what happened is that at the climax of this book, the two characters went through a lot and that kind of changed them. So that's why I'm really understanding of how the relationship took like not a good turn in the second book. But for what it was in the first part of the book, I think it was so beautiful and I still loved it as much as I did the first time around. But I do now see the problematic points that this relationship does have. In all, I still love this book. I still gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It's just one of my favorites. I love this series so much. And I will probably be rereading it for all the time. Even though I don't have to anymore because the series is kind of finished. At least the trilogy of these character stories because there's going to be more books but they're spin-offs but I just don't think I'll ever get over this story and it's just one of my favorites and I'm glad I got to reread it for a third time and I do actually really love the audiobook to this book because I listen to it on audiobook and I love how it's told. I love the voices. The audiobooks are great. I'd really recommend to listen to them if you haven't yet and yeah. Gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. It's still amazing. It still just gives me this like magical feeling. It's just so beautiful. So those were the two books I read in May. Now going on to June, I read three books. I read 1,437 pages. I read one fantasy and two contemporary books. I gave one book a 4 star and two books a 5 star. So overall, this was a great reading month. And I read one standalone and two books that were a part of a series. So you may have guessed already, but I continue on with the A Court of the Wings Rose series with A Court of Mist and Fury. This was the first book I got to during June, and I also listened to the audiobook to this, which the audiobook made this book go by so much faster because this is a huge book. It's like 600 and something pages, and the audiobook made it feel like it was like a 400-page book to me, but um, I listened to this book in my room, in the car, like constantly, like whenever I got a chance, when I was doing chores, I would listen to this book, and... I, just like I mentioned, I actually love this book more the second time than I did the first time. And I don't know if that just has to do with the audiobook. Maybe it resonated better with me in audiobook form. But I was really surprised. Because the first time I read this book, I still wasn't entirely keen on Feyre and Rhysand. Rhysand was still, like, really kind of not in good terms with me. I still th didn't think very well of him. I still thought he was shady. And I kind of felt that whole way throughout this book. Um, except for the ending when I, he kind of started to grow on me. And the first time I read this, I felt like I was really just confused with the world and what was going on. But listening to the audiobook to this kind of made the book make more sense to me. And I think that's why I changed my rating to this to five stars. Because I ended up falling in love with it. I love the world of the Night Court more the second time I read it than the first. It's just everything about this book, like, I just changed my whole thoughts on it completely the second time around I read it. Like, the first time I read it, I gave it a 4.5 stars, and now I bumped it up to a 5 star because I just really fell in love with it this time around. And over time, Resan has grown even more on me, so that probably plays a big point because I honestly, I do think I love him more than Tamlin now because for a while I, like, 
really love Tamlin, but I just overall just loved this book more so the second time around I read it, which was awesome. And I can't wait to continue on with the series. I will be getting to the third book this month in July. It's going to happen. It's on my July TBR because I really want to know what happens. But I gave A Court of Mist and Fury 5 out of 5 stars. I changed my rating from a 4 out of 5 stars that I gave it last year when I read it the first time. I love the series. Could not recommend it enough. Next, I read P.S. I Still Love You, and this is the sequel to the To All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy. I read To All the Boys I've Loved Before two years ago, and I never ended up getting around to the second book, and I knew it was time right now to get to the second book, like, finally, because the third book had just come out, and I still hadn't read the second book yet, and it was, like, driving me crazy. So I finally got to it. And to give you the synopsis of this book, I'll actually give you the synopsis to the second book, so in case you do want to read this trilogy. So the first book is about a girl who gets over her crushes by writing letters to them, but she never sends them out. Instead, she keeps the letters in a hat box and just forgets about them. But one day, all of her letters get sent out to these boys, and she doesn't know who did it, and now she's like kind of humiliated because all these boys know she liked him, and now she's doing like damage control throughout the whole book and she also gets into a relationship throughout the book. This is a very good YA contemporary book. It's not very unique in a way. I think it's very much the typical YA contemporary book but I still love this series. I think it's a lot of fun and the things the main character gets into are just really ridiculous but it's very realistic of the sort of things that teenagers get themselves into nowadays I feel like. And I did end up loving P.S. I Still Love You, the second book. I think it was good. I liked it just as much as I liked the first book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars, which I also gave the first book 4 out of 5 stars. So in all so far, this series isn't like amazing to me. It's not like my favorite, but they are very enjoyable. And I'm really looking forward to starting the third book, which I am hoping to get to this month, if not next month. And this can be a series that I will finally finish because it had been so long since I'd read the second book. So I read the first book two years ago and don't want that to happen again. So I'll be getting to the third book as soon as I can. And the last book I read in June is my favorite book I've read in like a long time. It was amazing. And that is The Problem with Forever by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I just put out a review for this book, so I'll link it somewhere if you want to know deeper on my thoughts on it. As for a synopsis, this book is about a girl who used to be in foster care. And while she was in foster care, she was not very well taken care of. Her foster parents were super mean to her. They like abused her like mentally and physically. And while she was there, she also lived with another foster kid named Ryder who always took care of her, always took the beans for her when she would get in trouble. But she did end up moving out of the foster home and into a better living place with parents who actually did take care of her. But in doing so, she got separated from Ryder. So now she's starting her senior year of high school. She had never been to school before since she was homeschooled. And there she sees Ryder and they kind of rekindle their friendship and they also start to build a relationship throughout this book. I absolutely love this book. It like left such a big impact on me. I think the theme of this book was just so beautiful. It kind of has to do with the theme that everyone deserves to be like loved, which I love that theme. I love when books have that theme and this one just brought this theme just to light and just made me really feel it. I really felt for the characters, mainly Mallory, which is the main character, and Ryder and what they had to go through and how they overcome their past with being abused and how they grew from that and moved on was beautiful and they really helped each other to just get over that PTSD that they have because of what they went through and seeing them help each other get over their feelings of their hopelessness for not being loved by anyone and how they really supported each other was just amazing and I love the relationship in this book. I think the romance in this book was done so well and it wasn't insta-lovey to me at all which I really appreciated and I think how it grew over time was just amazing. So I really love this book. I recommend it to anyone because it's such a beautiful story. However, if you do have kind of like trigger warnings for 
what are they, like abuse and drug use because there are some kind of drug references in this book. I wouldn't recommend to pick this one up, but if that doesn't bother you, then definitely give it a try if you haven't read it yet. This was actually my first Jennifer L. Armentrout book I've ever read, and I know she's a really well-known author, and this is actually her only contemporary book. So I want to read more from her. Um, I think the next one I'm going to read is the Lux series, just because that one's really popular, and I do really want to read that series, and that's kind of like a kind of a paranormal like fantasy so that's really different from this book but I'm looking forward to reading more from her I love this book it's my favorite book I read this month for sure and I definitely obviously gave it a five out of five stars just loved it and I know this will be a book I'll read someday because it was amazing so that was my May and June wrap up in total for these two months I read five books five books in two months I think I can do better than that but at least I actually started reading again after I came out of that slump because that slump was just awful and I needed to get out of it. And I'm hoping for this month I'll be able to read more than like three books like I did in June. Um, I have a lot of books on my TBR so maybe that'll happen but so far I'm not doing good. I'm not keeping up with my reading at all so we'll just have to see. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below and I post new videos every Wednesday and Friday at like 12 o'clock.